everybody. Today we're going to do another clean and simple card. I have a fun one for you today. I wanted to use these two stamp sets. So I have Petite Pears on my left. Great sentiments. I really love them. And Secret Garden on the right. And just really pretty florals. You can make your own flowers. You can do the multicolor, single color. They even look good just black and white. Trust me. These are great stamp sets. And I was surprised at how, what a variety of greetings and sentiments exist in the petite pairs when I got it in the mail. So, along with that, today we're going to use some markers. Um, we're going to use um, pear pizzazz. And note that one side of the marker has a thin line and one has a thick, right? We're always going to be working with the thick side today because that's the thicker edge of the marker. The thin side is for journaling. We're also going to use, um, who it won't, uh, there it goes, so saffron. And we're going to use a little bit of pumpkin pie, which doesn't want to focus, but trust me, that's pumpkin pie. Each time we're going to use these markers is to color the flowers. And then finally, we're going to use wisteria wonder which is one of my favorite kind of plum purples okay along with these we're going to have some paper of course we're going to have a base of uh wisteria wonder which is four and a quarter by five and a half but actually the long way so the card is is uh opening vertically and then we're going to have a strip of whisper white that is two and a quarter thick and a little tiny bit less than five and a half long a little scrap of whisper white, long as it's about a half, one and a half inches, you're good. And then we're going to use some dyes. So we're going to use the framelits for apothecary absent accents, and particularly we're going to use this one out of that kit. When you're using these framelit dyes, remember that the blade has to be facing the paper, and this is the blade right here. So as long as that's facing down on the paper, you're really good. So let me show you a little trick, though, that you might not know with this die. I'm going to show you two pieces of paper. So here's one where I cut it out on a textured piece of paper. I stamped on it, and I did a little bit of paper piercing. You can do that in this card as well if you'd like. But notice that the edges are very flat, okay? I just did a single cut. Now on this one, notice that my edges are a little beveled. Isn't that kind of cool? And notice that instead of piercing, I used the marker through the holes in the template to make dots. So to get the bevel, let me just show you what I did. So I took it and cut it normally just once. And so remember, again, when you cut, your blade is going to be facing the paper. And so you'll normally have it blade side down. So you'll run it through the big shot like that. Well, after you run it through that way, turn it upside down, run it through embossed with a piece of like cereal box cardboard and a, your favorite shim. And when you run it through with the, bee, with the embossing plates, then what you'll get is this little bevel. The more, the thicker and the stronger the pressure, the deeper the bevel will be. But I often do that. It's kind of like a fun thing to do with the edges of your die cuts. Anyway, let's keep going. So also I used the uh, Edgelets Finishing Touches dies. And I used them on two pieces of coordinating paper in Pear Pizzazz. I used that Edgelet. And then the other one I used on the So Saffron, right? Now it looks a little bit crooked, but don't worry because it's gonna go behind our focal piece. It's okay if it's cut a little bit crooked. All right. So let's get started understanding how we're going to do this stamping. We're actually going to do something unique. We're going to take, a, take advantage of our clear E block. It's a big block. So since it's so big, I'm going to be able to put more than one stamp on it. And that's what's going to make this fun. Okay, so first I'm going to start with the pear pizzazz marker. And of course I'm using the thickest edge of the marker. Um, because, and I'm using the side of the marker. Now my markers have been messed up because of maybe ag aggressive stampers, but if you want to keep your markers good for a long time, 
just use the side of the marker instead of the tip of the marker and you don't have to press down hard I use so saffron for that second flower and now I'm going to use wisteria wonder for this flower just making sure that I'm covering it so that the stamp looks wet and then the final uh, flower I'm going to do with the uh, pumpkin pie and this one is the easiest one because it's just lines it blurred a little bit sorry about that but it's just lines and then once you're done with all of that you're gonna pick up your stamp and you're going to angle it on the paper so that you get the most stamps as possible and the least amount of white space on your strip so you're going to stamp this twice, so you're just trying to get the top section. And I kind of let it rest for a minute, and then that's good. And now I'm going to color it again. Now have a little rag handy, because just to ensure more randomness, I'm going to switch to the big flowers. I'm going to make the one that was Wisteria Wonder, Wonder to be um, pumpkin pie, and the one that was pumpkin pie is going to become Wisteria Wonder. Again, I apologize for the blurring. I'm not sure why that's happening, but I'm just coloring these stamps. And I'm using Wisteria Wonder on the line stamp. And then I'm going to use the other two are going to be exactly the same as they were. So I didn't have to wipe the other two, just the two that I was swapping. So the leaf was going to be the pear pizzazz. And the other flower is going to be the so saffron so and i think it's blurring because it's a sunny day but the sun kind of is going up and down outside and i'm lighting this only by sun today so again sorry all right so once i have them all stamped up i'm going to huff on them so what you don't see is i'm blowing on the stamps because it may take a while for me to finish coloring and you want them to be wet and the breath my own breath dampens them so now I'm kind of playing around here, totally unnecessary, you know me, the artistic part of me wants to get this in some kind of way that I don't even understand where I'm going. But you want to stamp it so that you, again, get the most amount of stamps, but the least amount of white space next to what you've already stamped. All right, so it looks like you're doing a lot of stamping, but you're only stamping twice here because you're taking advantage of the size of the e-block, okay? So now if you look at this, it's just random stamping. Okay, I'm gonna put that on the side and I'm gonna pull out my um, Wisteria Wonder card base and that green strip. And today I'm using uh, mono adhesive. One thing I like about liquid adhesives, especially this one, I actually like it a lot, is it allows me to put a very thin line of glue on and it allows me to move it a little bit. Like if I want to get it in right, just the right position, it gives me some time to move it um, because the, the liquid glue, although it's fast drying, it doesn't dry so fast that I can't move things around. So I'm just going to line that up on the left side of the card using the straight edge of the die cut to kind of help me know how to get it straight. And then for the white piece, I'm going to turn it upside down and line one side of it with the strip of so saffron so i'm going to um, oh i wanted to point out to you that you see here where it cuts that that's also a beautiful edge so it's kind of like with that die you get two edges for the price of one i've used that one i like it anyway back to the card um, i'm just going to put this yellow strip along the other side so i'm just going to put a little bit of this mono adhesive on that strip of so saffron and then I'm going to lay it on the side of the card, on the side of the piece that I stamped, but on the side that has no stamps on it. So it's going to be behind it when it's on the card. And before I press it all the way down, I'm going to turn it back over so that I can make it straight just by, you know, kind of pulling it along. In case I cut it crooked, it won't matter because I'm going to make it straight behind this piece when I, um, when I add it. And I'm just going to cut off a little bit of extra. So whenever you have extra, just use your snip, your paper snips to um, take that off. And then finally, I'm going to put the whole piece on top of the green. And again, I'm just going to use mono adhesive, keeping it simple and fast. 
and enable me to move it around if I need to. So I want a glue that's that's an adhesive that's really strong, but yet is a little flexible for me while I'm laying this out. And I'm just laying that up it's a little bit high on the camera, but I'm just laying out so it fits on top of the green and is a, there's a little bit more of the green showing than of the yellow. And there's a little strip that's kind of over. If you have a little bit long piece, always pull it down to the bottom because it's easier to correct from the bottom of the card than from the fold. You don't want to put any extra at the fold because then you can't cut it off. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my marker to highlight the thanks so much from Petite Pears. I think, what does it say? It says, um, sending many thanks. And it doesn't matter if it's crooked because I'm going to take my oval punch and I'm going to cut it out in such a way that it's nice and straight. So this is an exception. I don't need my stamp on my jig in this case because I'm using the punch to make it straight. And that's going to be the center of that label that we made earlier. And I've already done that to save time. And then finally, I'm going to take a couple of my stamping dimensionals. And you could just use two. I don't know why I was in the mood to use three. And you just, and then you're going to take those backs off. I find that if I just stick my thumbnail in the middle of that, it makes it pop up and, and easier to take off. Little tip, FYI. And then I'm going to put that on my card and you can put it anywhere you'd like. I'm putting it towards the bottom, which I consider to be like the hot spot. Uh, and I'm just going to put that down and that's going to be the end of this card today. So it's kind of like one of those cards where you get your stamp and fix, um, but you don't spend too much time and it really looks nice. It's nice. These are, this is the subtitles. The subtle car, uh, color collection is really pretty. It's very soft and friendly. Have a great day, and thanks for coming and visiting again. Please come back again next week for some more videos, and have a great Stampin' Day.